Are you ready to witness history in the making? In this video, we reveal the secrets behind the skyrocketing value of Bitcoin and how it's paving the way for a $10 million valuation. We will explore the factors driving this crazy rise and the potential impact it could have on the financial world. So buckle up and get ready to embark on an exciting journey towards a brighter future with Bitcoin. Welcome to Knowledge Pilot. Forget about technology for a moment. Let's talk about the real deal, money. You may think that you have a solid understanding of money, think again. History has taught us the true essence of money, and when it comes to hard money, it always wins over less hard money. Enter Bitcoin, the digital embodiment of everything good about gold, but without the Achilles heel of physicality. Gold's material nature led to centralization in vaults and the issuance of promissory notes, which ultimately resulted in the creation of fiat money. But Bitcoin eliminates all those problems by being the perfect hard money for the digital age. While physical gold has its benefits, it also presents a perplexing issue. You see, there's technically an infinite amount of gold in the universe. All of the gold that's deposited in the Earth was formed during the explosions of stars and collisions of asteroids. This process is still ongoing. Furthermore, there's untapped gold right here already. It's in the sea. Scientists estimate that the oceans of the world contains approximately 20 million tons of gold in the water itself. So, imagine if scientists could engineer something that extracts gold from seawater. The thing about gold is that it's subject to the laws of supply and demand, just like any other commodity. Flood the market with too much gold and its value plummets. And let's not forget about the vast amounts of gold lurking below ground, waiting to be discovered and mined. But here's where Bitcoin shines. Unlike gold, it's not limited by its physicality. It's a digital representation of absolute scarcity something that has never been possible before in the physical world. And Satoshi Nakamoto managed to nail it with Bitcoin on the very first try through a combination of sheer luck and brilliance. Difference between Bitcoin and crypto. Number one, is crypto considered a security? Let's dive into the unique monetary properties that set Bitcoin apart from other cryptocurrencies. One expert who offers an insightful perspective on this topic is Lynn Alden. She possesses an important question. When you sacrifice some of the decentralization or try to improve on some of the qualities of Bitcoin, what do you ultimately introduce? Governance. And with governance comes a trade-off. You must sacrifice either scarcity or decentralization. Essentially, it's like investing in digital equities. It's a complex and fascinating topic. It seems like there are two distinct paths to consider here. Unfortunately, the SEC is starting to provide some clarity on the matter. When it comes to Bitcoin, it's clearly a commodity based on its design and structure, as proven by something called the Howey Test. The Howey Test refers to the US Supreme Court case for determining whether a transaction qualifies as an investment contract. If a transaction is found to be an investment contract, it's considered a security. The Howey Test is a legal framework which comprises four key elements, and for an asset to be considered a security, it must satisfy all four elements. The four elements are 1. Investment of money 2. Expectation of profit 3. Common enterprise and 4. Efforts of others Bitcoin is not considered a security by the rules of the Howey Test because it fails to satisfy the third and four elements of the test, i.e. common enterprise and efforts of others. First, a common enterprise exists when investors pool their resources together to achieve a common goal. In the case of Bitcoin, there is no such common enterprise. Investors buy and sell Bitcoins independently of each other, without pooling resources to achieve a common goal. Second, the efforts of others element refers to the idea that an investor's profit is dependent on the work of a third party, such as a company or promoter. However, Bitcoin is a decentralized system, meaning that no individual or entity is responsible for its success or failure. Investors' profits or loss is determined solely by market forces and their own actions. What about the other cryptocurrencies? The vast majority of other cryptocurrencies out there, about 99% of them, are designed in a way that classifies them as unlicensed securities, according to the Howey test. These other cryptocurrencies would be considered securities because they have leadership teams retaining a portion of the supply to fund the crypto project, and investors buy the tokens with the expectation that the team will work to deliver profits. Therefore, it's a security. It's important to understand the key differences between these two pathways and how they impact the regulatory landscape for cryptocurrencies. The Howey test in use here will result in many cryptocurrencies disqualifying themselves at the outset simply because they are securities. 
Do you really want to hold onto something that the SEC might shut down because it violates securities laws? It's a risky investment, and while some argue that the Howey test needs updating, it's still the law of the land. Number 2. Digital Scarcity The real magic of Bitcoin lies in its digital scarcity. This is something that has never existed before in the digital world, and it's what makes Bitcoin truly revolutionary. For the first time, there now exists a digital system that cannot be copied or duplicated. However, Bitcoin's most groundbreaking feature, which is its ability to achieve digital scarcity, also presents a unique problem. Anyone can copy the system and create replicas of it. It's like having a delicious pie recipe that you can use to duplicate as many pies as you want. In fact, just about a year ago, there were 7,000 alternative cryptocurrencies out there. And since then, that number has skyrocketed to over 20,000. When it comes to digital scarcity, creating copies of a system is easy. However, this poses a philosophical dilemma. If there are endless copies, then the value of each individual copy becomes less and less scarce. This is because it costs next to nothing to create a new altcoin or system. Therefore, the true rarity and value lies solely in the original instance of digital scarcity, which is finite and unique. In other words, the first and only original is the one that truly matters. When it comes down to it, there are two categories in the world of digital scarcity. Bitcoin with its genuine scarcity and the countless copies that are, in reality, not scarce at all. Once you wrap your head around this concept, everything else falls away. Yes, you might own a Solana, but there's always a new and improved version of Solana around the corner, as well as a swarm of copycats of that, which creates a constantly diluting market. It dilutes the finite portion of the Solana market that you thought you had, leaving you uncertain about its true value. The only true scarce digital currency is the original, Bitcoin. How to get to $10 million per Bitcoin Everyone in the world has a portfolio of different assets. That's because we think that those assets will maintain their value over time, so they can be used in the future. We all hope that the value of these different assets remains stable without losing any value along the way, and may even grow in value over time. This is why we have it in stocks or real estate for example. So these different assets are called store of value assets. This means that anything that has value is considered a store of value asset. So real estate, stocks, bonds, money, precious metals like gold, art, and collectibles are all store of value assets. We are using these as vehicles to propagate our wealth through time. Some studies estimate that the global net worth of all these store of value assets is $900 trillion. There is $900 trillion of value parked in different assets in the world. So by researching how that $900 trillion is distributed across the different asset classes and estimating how much of that Bitcoin could capture over time, we arrive at almost $10 million per Bitcoin. Of course, these are just estimations and the future of Bitcoin is uncertain, but this should provide some insights into the potential growth and possibilities of this revolutionary digital currency. If you need more convincing, then in another video, we will add some more weight to this argument. Who knows, maybe one day, we will all look back and realize that the path to $10 million per Bitcoin was just the beginning. Thank you for watching.